Jennifer, talk to us a little bit about the, the, the testing that you're working on so far, uh, the progress that you've made, and what the findings have been. Hi, and thanks for including me on the show. So we have a pop-up testing lab for COVID-19 virus here at UC Berkeley and the Innovative Genomics Institute. The reason that we put this lab in place was to address an urgent need that I think many people are aware of to rapidly test people that have symptoms of this disease, but also ultimately to test asymptomatic folks as well. And uh, we need to we need to be able to test them. We need to be able to report the results quickly. And, uh, and then we need to ultimately develop ways to track those infections and find out who, is infect who has been infected and who is now protected from infection because they have uh, antibodies. And so ultimately we want to do serological so testing in the future as well. What are you doing differently than other labs that are returning tests in like one, two, or sometimes even three weeks? Well, we have a, a highly automated system. We were able to get robots into our lab quickly by donations from companies and faculty around the UC Berkeley campus. We have a team of people who are highly trained in how to run these robots and also how to manage the data coming out of the test. And it's uh, just an operation. It's just been sort of amazing to see this operation come together so quickly with a team of people that, uh, you know, uh, three short weeks ago had no idea they would be doing this kind of work, but, but who recognized that they could lend their experience to this effort. What is the status of your federal certification? Uh, some labs and, and, and folks who've been working on tests have actually had them pulled by the FDA. Right. So we have, we're, we're running a commercially available test that has an emergency use authorization from the FDA. We also have CLIA certification now for this clinical testing lab, and we're in full compliance with, with uh, both state and federal requirements. This has taken a, a massive effort, I have to say, and we're, we're putting in place a, a very detailed document for how we got regulatory approval for the lab quickly. And we're going to be posting that onto a preprint server shortly so that other institutions that want to do what we've done have a pathway for doing so. Now, would you warn about some of these other rapid response tests that are, are hitting the market? Or are, do, you, do you think that these are scientists just trying to do something uh, you know, to help and, and, and that actually are legitimate, even though they can't get through the sometimes clunky approval process that is involved with the FDA? Look, I think that, you know, having, having proper approvals for testing is critical for sure. You know, there's, a, there's an effort right now, as you know, to ramp up the testing capacity around the country and around the world. And so I'm, I certainly applaud those that are stepping up to do this. Ultimately, those tests need to be approved, though, for, for clinical use. Why do you think we still lack appropriate testing in the United States? I mean, certainly things are ramping up, but, 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 but not fast enough. Well, I think it's a combination of things. I, I, I learned, uh, I was very surprised to learn that commercial testing laboratories, at least out here in California, where, where I'm located, have a, up to a seven-day turnaround for patient samples. And the reason is that many of those labs are running manual operations. They're not, they're not automated. And uh, so I think that's, that's one factor. I think it's very interesting that, uh, you know, there's, because of the way that uh, laboratory testing is often done commercially, it's a, it's a highly distributed process. It's not really sort of centrally organized. And as a result, each lab is having to implement its own pro procedure. And I can, I can now vouch personally for the fact that, you know, putting these kinds of procedures in place and ensuring compliance takes a lot of effort. So uh, I think it's just a combination of having this distributed laboratory system that we have here in the United States and the fact that many labs were not able to quickly pivot to an automated pipeline that would enable rapid turnaround.